Hello, you are watching Gaming Marketing Course, where you will learn how to get into gaming marketing. Today, we're going to talk about understanding gamers, why they play, who they are, and how to target them. My name is Victoria Wojcik, and I'm a co-founder of Instreamly, a platform that helps marketers tap into gaming potential via gaming streamers. We have helped over 150 brands do that already, and I'm happy to share all the knowledge that we learned through it. So let's go. You can see that, you know, gay, Gen Z are gaming lovers. You will hear that all around. 87% of them play games and you will definitely want to make your marketing related to gaming. Easy. Gaming, Gen Z, let's go. But I will show you an example in a very different mirror. So let's make a comparison. If I said majority of, let's say, Generation G are music fans, would your campaign look like this? Oh, let's throw some note icons, a microphone, a photo of a music crowd, and also let's make a music jingle. Yes, we made music marketing. So innovative, they will love us. Can Lion, here we come. It sounds crazy, doesn't it? You would say first, okay, uh, what kind of music do they listen to? Who do we exactly want to target? Do they listen to rock, metal, maybe rap or K-pop? Are they casual listeners? Or do they aspire to make music on their own? Do they go to concerts? And all those questions would be relevant in terms of music marketing. And it's the same for gamers. Gen Z or generally any type of campaign and any type of people. So why do every, nearly every gaming marketing campaign look like this? The same stock photo, the same glitch, and for some reason Pac-Man, nobody plays Pac-Man. Fake weird game made by mashing together different games that don't go together. Glitch and 8-bit fonts, pads, even if the game you are targeting, the gamers you are targeting do not play on pads. It always looks like this for, for a reason. And gamers are not that simple. This graph from Quantic Foundry shows gamer motivation profiles. They have made uh, up to 20, but normally they use 12, gamer motivation profiles. Grouped players by why they play and what aspects of games are important for them. So you can see that on the left you'll have the ninjas. The players that want to be the best, they want to have the best skill, they are all about competition, getting excited. They are not for design or discovery, they do not care how the game looks in some way. They just want to be the best, they want to have the challenge. And on the right, these are still gamers. The bards, are, they want to play a part in a grand story, they will play games like Final Fantasy, Animal Crossing, they will care about community fantasy, discovery and story, they want to design stuff. They are both gamers, they are playing games, but they are playing games for very different reasons. And if you want to reach the people on the left, you would need to do something maybe around esports, give them an opportunity to participate in a competition or learn from the best players. But those people on the right will more, be more appealed by a community something, a community contest that's not about competition, but showing your creativity, about doing stuff together. And a creative challenge is something they are up to, but they are not about competition. So these are both gamers. And to target them and to understand why they play, you have to understand them co correctly. And I really encourage you to go to Quantic Foundry blog and read more about those gamer motivation profiles because they dive in deep in different kinds of games and different kinds of reasons that people play. All in all, you cannot just slap a street sticker for gamers on something and call it a gaming campaign. And this is not about gaming only, this is about every Gen Z or not Gen Z niche. There's in the end nothing like gaming, Gen Z or music campaign. It's always a campaign. So do yourself the favor and first ditch the adjectives to reach each campaign separately, each target group, each kind of gamers that you want to reach separately and approach them as people. Because in the end, if you want to a definition of a gamer, you would say that 
this is a person that just plays games. Nothing more, nothing less. And this is a big enough group to treat them as individuals and to treat them as many, many subgroups that you will approach a bit differently. This is the first thing you should always know and keep in mind when you're doing a gaming campaign. So why do gamers even play games? This is a survey made by Deloitte in US, UK, Germany, Brazil and Japan. And the results are pretty consistent. Gaming supports a lot of different emotional and social needs. They state that video games help them relax. They help them express themselves and show themselves, play as a different character, create their own character, design stuff that it's about them making up the story that resonates with their identity. It also enables them to connect with other people. Some gamers will care about it more, some gamers will care about it less. But for sure, for a lot of gamers, it's important to make connections with other people when they play. Around 50% of gamers choose to play multiplayer games. They want the challenge, the competition, being able to clash with other humans, or also they want to a sense of community. And out of those people, that 50% that play multiplayer games, the 50%, especially around MMO games, so games that are not just quick competition, 40 minutes gameplay loops, but more about an ongoing story experienced together in, with other people, they state that they use games to socialize. In the end, games in some way are just a context for spending time together. And my best comparison for it and the best way to understand it is bowling. Imagine you go bowling with your friends. You will choose bowling over kayaking because you prefer bowl instead of, you know, rowing. Kayaking is just not your kind of sport. But you do not go to play bowling because you want to bowl hard and you are a hardcore bow bowling player most of the time. You go bowling to spend time with your friends in the context of bowling. It's the same with games. Sometimes we play because the game is just a context for spending time together with other people. Of course, we choose one game over other because this is, you know, the kind of gameplay that we enjoy. But in the end, it's not the most important thing. We could do another thing that's similar, but the most important thing is we'll be doing it with those people. And you can see it especially in live streaming, in gaming live streaming, because there are many, many, many streamers streaming the same game. And you will choose a League of Legends streamer over a CSGO streamer because you like League of Legends more. But you will watch a certain streamer for their personality, for how entertaining they are, what they talk about, and not only for the raw gameplay. We watch other people play games and we play with other people because it's not only about the game. We want the mix of entertainment plus the gameplay. In terms of live streaming, it's entertainment, entertaining personality plus the game that's just the context. Sometimes we watch live streaming or spend time with other in the context of game because we don't even care about the game and playing the game, but we enjoy spending time in the context of it. And this is a reason to just, you know, get together with other people. And, you know, sometimes it's also about not being passive. In terms of live streaming, you will chat with other people because it's engaging and you are part of a group, part of a community. And also sometimes you will play a game to get better. You will play game with better players to get better at the game. You will watch better players, but you always choose who you play with for a reason. The game is just a context for spending time together. And there are many ways gamers can enjoy gaming. This is a very good segmentation from Nuzu, uh, Gaming Personas. This is a lot to read. Also, you can access those slides uh, later. There is a link in the description down below to download the slides. But let's just go over, there, over them briefly. I will just turn off my camera. So first, you have the ultimate gamer, the person that you think about when you hear, oh, gaming. 
and then they are those you know gamers that you would see and call a gamer especially 10 years ago they will sit in the basement spend all their free time playing games spend money on games and then you'll have the all-around enthusiast the person that is interested in all forms of gaming and they are playing watching but they are not very like ultimate gamer they are just enjoying it as their pastime as the like a favorite form of entertainment the community gamer are all about all the fuzz around games they chat with other people they read news they're more excited even about what's happening around the games than the game at all and of course they will never miss out on community discussion there are bargain buyers people who will play less and they will just try to spend as little money as possible for the maximum ROI of entertainment. The hardware enthusiasts that treat gaming and sometimes it's less about playing the games and more about making their station the best, looking cool and being a gamer as a sense of lifestyle. And there are the popcorn gamers uh, as well. So as we said before, people can enjoy games without playing the popcorn gamers are just them they enjoy watching other people play games even though they do not enjoy playing themselves i for example watch probably more games lately i play more but for some time i for sure watched more than i played i think i watched around 50 hours of hollow knight content and played for just 25 i'm not that good at this game but i enjoy good content around it there are also people, the time fillers, so those who will play a game uh, if they have spare time to go. They will play mostly on mobile games. So, for example, so for example, they will, uh, when they are commuting, play for twenty minutes short games. This is why mobile games are also usually about short rounds, and even if they are porting games from PC. For example, League of Legends has League of Legends Wild Rift, so a mobile version of League of Legends that's just a bit less. And it's shorter, it's quicker in gameplay because they know that mobile players don't have 40 minutes at a time to play. There are also the backseat viewers, so people who used to play a lot when they were younger and now they grew a bit older, they don't have enough time or, you know, uh, brain bandwidth to be able to play a lot. But they enjoy watching an esports event from time to time. They will enjoy watching other people play games. This is how you reignite your passion. Some people come back to gaming when they get kids and they play with kids as a way to spend time together with their kids because for kids it's still, you know, very good entertainment. And there is the lapsed gamer, somebody who used to play a lot and then other things in life happened and they gave priority to other things over gaming. Okay, so we learned about different types of gamers, but there's also a very interesting distinction of how people play when you talk about male versus female gamers. So I will tell you this, girls play games. A lot of them, and this is not something that needs to be proved, they play a bit differently, different kinds of games. You will see them less prominent in the, you say, let's say most popular uh, communities, or for example, they will be a bit more quiet for different reasons. Like sexism in, sexism in gaming is a whole of a different story to talk about. But today let's stand on this. Women play games, they play games a lot. And it's very interesting to see how they play games because they approach it a bit differently. So this is a split of percentage of female and male gamers who play on each platform. So 94% of women will say that will, they play on mobile and 59% of them will play on console and PC. And you can see that the trend of stats is like the same in men and women. So men will play on more platforms, like the, the biggest percentage, but still the first one is mobile, then there is PC, and the last one is console. 
So you can say that you can see female gamers in many different platforms, in many different communities. There are different kinds of games that they'll play. So coming back to things that Quantic Foundry did when they were talking about primary motivations of, of games, the most common primary motivations for male gamers, and these are male gamers that say that they are male, are competition and destruction. So games uh, when you just blow things up, where you compete with other players like Fortnite, like League of Legends, CSGO, will be statistically more popular among men than women. It doesn't mean that women will not play those games. But there is also a very uh, good uh, research by them that women will prefer fantasy while men will pre prefer sci-fi games. And you can clearly imagine what fantasy sometimes is about versus sci-fi. So then uh, you will have female motivation uh, and the female motivation for games uh, is mostly completion. So getting all the achievement, collecting all the things, getting all the missions up. So for example, when I played uh, Boyfriend Dungeon, I wanted to make sure that I have the, the biggest status with all of the weapons that I played with. And fantasy. For women, it's sometimes about exploring a story, uh, designing, being experiencing a community. This is why games like The Sims are popular with women. And this is why uh, a lot of aspects of games that were previously only about competition and destruction, let's say, are exploring different kinds of ways to enjoy it, so women enjoy it more. For example, Fortnite. It was always about competition, always about winning the battle royale. And then they introduced the playground, the map builder where you can build your own map, spend time with friends, create something different than the just usual gameplay loop of Fortnite. And this is why Roblox, as a platform that allows for everyone to create their own game, and there are big studios creating games for Roblox, is visited a lot by women. I think the split is there around 50-50. So allowing different kinds of motivations shine through different games is a way to reach different kind of gamers. And of course, once again, women will play the competitive games. You will find them, they will play in esports teams, they will compete the same way as men will play in the games that are more about design, community, or just fantasy and story. There are gamers or different kinds everywhere. We are talking about subtle statistical differences that are also important to just, you know, understand and be able to pinpoint because if you are doing an esports event, you can expect that just 10 or 20% of people are attending it will be women. And this is totally all right. So what connects most gamers? Because we talked about the differences, but what about the things that connect all of the gamers? There are four major things that you should know about all gamers. The first one for gamers, this is their preferred type of entertainment. Young people will spend more time gaming, they're watching TV. And there are more and more people that choose to spend their free time playing games instead of doing anything else. If you play games, usually gaming or consuming content around gaming, being part of a gaming community is your preferred form of entertainment. The second thing, it's not just about playing. As I said, you don't have to play a game to enjoy gaming. Being a part of gaming culture does not mean that you play a lot or even at all. You can take part in events, watch YouTube videos, watch live streams, or even make games yourself. And you are still entertaining yourself within the gaming space. So this is when we are talking about gamers, we are always talking about all the different forms of enjoying gaming. The next thing is, Games help in self-development. Gamers find a reason to play and they enjoy gaming not because of just entertainment. 
gamers are more likely to have a creative hobby, they will more likely consider family a top priority. Gaming is a way to develop yourself. You are exploring and living through sometimes very hard and very, you know, moving stories. You are a part of a community, you are creating stuff with other people. You are unleashing your creativity there. Games help in self-development and can be a useful tool for it. And this is what, you know, joins all gamers together. Even if sometimes they are not the best representatives because, you know, some people are toxic and they will not be the best teammates in your online game. But in a way, once they, one day they will learn that teamwork and keeping calm is, calm is better than being toxic. And four, gamers are regular people. They are mothers, fathers, sisters and brothers. They are everywhere. Everybody is playing games. So, you know, there's in a way nobody like gamer the same way there is nobody like cinema goer or TV watcher. Of course, there will be some characteristics that connect those people. But in the end, gamers are just normal people and anyone can play games. And I think this is amazing. So here are the three best practices if you want to target gamers. First of all, make sure that your activation, whatever you do within gaming, matches the motivation profile for a certain game. So a creativity showcase would make more sense in Animal Crossing than CSGO. Or if you want to target the creative, creative part of CSGO creators, players, etc., this is the right way to go, but know what to expect of different kinds of games and why people play them and make sure that whatever you do fits to the game. Then the second thing, gamer broadly is not a target group in a way that Gen Z is not a target group and old people is in some way not a target group. TV watcher, movie goer is not a target group. So don't talk to them like they are some kind of aliens, some different people. Ta talk to them like you would talk to other people. And not every product needs a 4Gamer sticker, sticker to be marketed to people who play, watch or enjoy games. Treat games as just a context, as a starter point for your campaign. The next thing, look at gaming broadly. There are a lot of different tools to utilize around gaming. It's not about just playing games. It's not about just esports competitions or events. There are a lot of ways you can approach gamers from a lot of different motivations. And we will talk about those tools and tactics, at least the most basic ones in the next episodes. So summing up, gamers are engaged in more activities than just playing games. They watch, they create, they en enjoy communities, they spend time together within games. Gamers are playing for many different reasons and you should always look into what kind of motivation do you want to target? What kind of spark do you want to sp spark in people when you do a gaming campaign? And the third thing, gamers are just regular people and you should approach them as such. You should find and define your target group within gaming and not treat them as just one homogenous group. In the next episode, we will talk about live streaming marketing. So why do we watch people play games? How to approach marketing on Twitch and YouTube? Some strategy, uh, starting points, statistic, tactics and tools. And if you enjoyed this episode, uh, remember that you can download the slides in the link below. And of course, we have more for you. So you can learn more about gaming marketing. The whole course is six episodes and you will also find the, the links in the description below. And remember, at the end, uh, we encourage you to test your knowledge so you can get your gaming marketing certificate uh, on our landing page. This is also linked below. And remember, if you enjoyed this video, please share it with your, with your colleagues. Please share it with other people on your social media, etc. It really, really helps us out. And I'm not telling it as us as, as extremely. It helps us gamers because, 
you know, the more people learn, the better campaigns we get. And of course, if you'd like to do some stuff in gaming, have a brand you want to enter gaming with, uh, you can do it with us. Uh, we do it uh, by getting brands into live streaming, into gaming live streaming in a way that viewers actually enjoy. And feel free to contact me or just go through our website to learn more. And we'll be happy to help you get your brand into thousands and thousands of gaming live streams and in front of thousands and thousands of gamers and, you know, live streaming watchers. So thank you and let's see you in the next episode.